got married and raised a family. And so that was the only big job that I ever had. Because then raising a family was a very big job. <laughs> you should stay home and take care of your family. That's what I would say. I don't think you can juggle. Raising a family and having a career, I think, is disastrous. What role has faith played in your life? I was raised a Roman Catholic, and I was an ardent Roman Catholic for 37 years. But then when I was 37 years old, I had four children that I was raising, and I had a husband who was very sick. He was an epileptic, and it was just like all too much. And I felt like I was going under. And I was saying, but where's God? I thought I was worshiping God all these years when I was going to Catholic Church. Hey, what's up? And um, a girl came to my house and said, do you want to go to a prayer meeting? And I said, okay. So I went to this prayer meeting and was introduced to the Bible for the first time in my life and a lot of other books. And at that point, I was regenerated, meaning like I was born again would be the common term that's used. I was regenerated. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, received the gift of speaking in tongues. And it radically changed my whole life. I think that I was a great mother because I was, I had God to depend on. I had Him to depend on for wisdom, for strength, for everything that I needed. And it made me happy. I was a happy mother, a happy woman. Have integrity. Have integrity. That's very, very important. My doctor today told me, asked me, how old am I? I said, I'm 75. He said, wow. You are in good health. <laughs> you are that. Yeah, yeah. He told me today, Sylvia, for a 75-year-old guy to be in a good shape like you, uh, uh, he said, you are very, very fortunate. Yeah. Learn to take charge of yourself. Okay. And uh, like they say, God helps those who help themselves. Okay. God is not going to come down here and help you. You got to learn to help yourself. So people believe in taking depression, medication, medication, medication. And I go out every day, twice a day, for 30 minutes each time, walking and walking. When I'm walking, I keep singing, I sing, I listen to the birds, I talk to the birds, I listen to the trees rustle. Born and raised in India. And I migrated to USA in 1966. So I came in 1966. I landed in uh, New York. I was like a vagabond, you know. I was on the, on, on the go, go, go. I went to Africa. I worked in Africa, part of uh, Nigeria. From there, I went to Germany. I lived and worked in Germany. From Germany, I moved to England. And I worked there for a while. And then I applied for a visa to USA and I came from England to New York because my cousin lived in New York in Bronx so I came and stayed with him for about a few weeks few months and I found a job and I applied for my green card in those days you know 1966 and I got my green card in six months right in New York so I became a resident I got a BS in pharmacy from India. Then I came, when I came to New York, I went to St. John's. Okay, I got my master's in St. John's in 1969, 69. I loved being a pharmacist. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I like to, whatever knowledge, little knowledge I have, I, I like to share with people, you know, and I help out, you know, give people good recommendations for medications, for diet, for exercise. So that's become my second nature now. Then I went to Canada and I got my PhD in Canada. That's where I met Sylvia. After one year, we decided to get married. Yeah. And uh, we married twice. 
once in her church in England and from there we flew to India and we married again in the Hindu temple. <laughs> so we have two weddings, church wedding and uh, temple wedding. We all are, you know, fallible, you know, okay? We all make mistakes, but that doesn't mean that you stop there. You learn from mistakes. And the first thing you have to learn is never make the same mistake twice. And, 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 and always keep your eyes, ears open. See what's going around you and what people are talking about. And you will learn from other people's experiences. Okay? My name is Geraldine Riley. I was born in New York City, in Manhattan. I'm 76 years old. I just feel that one has to keep moving ahead and keep the interest going. It's good for the mind, it's good for the head. And when you get to a certain point in your life, not necessarily an age, but you get to a certain point, you really just have to grab all the information you can. And being curious is very good, very good. Seeking knowledge is really very good. The more information you have, the better it is to be able to make decisions about things in your life. Because it's always not on the upbeat. There are times when it's not too good, but it teaches you really how to get through the hard times, basically. Family really has to be, uh, my feeling is that where you, who you turn out to be depends a lot on how you're raised and how your family values are. And you really have to really keep your family values. You have to set your own standards. My family is probably the most important thing in my life. If I never did anything else again, raising my two children, that was the best thing I could have done. I did the, the Catholic, the Protestant, the Jewish, the Greek. I did all of that because living in where I lived in Manhattan, on the east side, that area, all of those churches were open to you. So everyone, you knew everyone belonged to a different denomination. So it was, it was very interesting, very educational. It depends on what you want to do, how far you want to go, um, how aggressive you are personality-wise, by nature, how much you want to accomplish. But you have to also know that you have to know when to not take on too much. Okay, you can only take on what you can han handle and then build from that. As time goes on, you're able to do more. Um, so that's really kind of what I, that's kind of what I always did. I uh, wasn't always pleased about end results about certain things, but uh, that's when you're in, everyone doesn't think the same. Everyone has a different thought process. And you just have to really kind of be with the people who kind of are on the same page you are. My name is Maggie Williamson. I am 79 years old. Okay, I met my husband when I was about a sophomore in high school. He was selling meat on a, he had a meat route, and I saw his truck, he sold pork and beef, so of course I asked him if he had any fish, and that's how I met him. <laughs> we were married in 1950, and a year later I had a daughter, Rebecca. And since then, I've had four other children. I have four daughters and one son. And they're all grown, all married, and live near me. They all live close to home. I went to work for DuPont in the sales down in Wilmington. And then when I got, once I got married and pregnant with my first child, which back then, you were not allowed to work when you were pregnant. So I quit, raised my five children, and then I went into being a pharmacy technician, and I worked for the HMO of Delaware until I retired at 65. For the younger generation, don't try to grow up too fast. Be a kid as long as you can be a kid. Enjoy your childhood, and when you do 
become a teenager and ready to go out and date and look for your mate, be careful choosing. I mean, there are really a lot of good people out there, but take your time and make sure you love them before you marry and try and stay married forever. I mean, that means a lot. here. I grew up in Philadelphia, in West Philadelphia, in Winfield, went to the Beaver Junior High, Mann Elementary. I'm a graduate of Overbrook High School, which is a very well-known high school in the city. Bill Chamberlain went there. They had a lot, you know, he was the big basketball player. And I was lucky enough to win a scholarship. Annenberg, Walter Annenberg, the great philanthropist, because I was a good student. I loved to study, I loved to learn, I loved languages and all. Penn was very difficult in the 1940s. I went in 46, graduated in 50. For a woman who did honors in science, it was difficult in that a class of 400 men would have two or three women. And some of the professors at that time just sort of didn't know how to handle us smart women. It was difficult. I have to tell you one instance where a prof I was the one in cat anatomy. That was my field. I was excellent. I helped all those boys get A's. I get a B. The professor saw a girl's name and gave it a B. I am sure of that. And others have. There were 50 men. When they found out I got a B, they carried me into his office, complained, and Dr. Nelson changed the mark. I mean, he, he said, oh, it's a mistake. Because he would leave the room and I would teach the class. In your year, I met this wonderful guy who had come back from MacArthur's army in Japan. My husband was in Kobe and all that, and we fell in love, and I was going to get married, so I figured I'll hold off on medical school. I'll get a fellowship. I need to get identity as a woman. Where am I going to go to a women, women's college? I want to see that women like me can move ahead in academia. So I got a fellowship to Bryn Mawr College, and I worked with Jane Oppenheimer, the famous embryologist, Mary Gardner, and the wonderful invertebrate scientist, invertebrate anatomy. And I was there for two years as a TA, working and getting a master's. And during that time, when Dr. Oppenheimer went off on a Fulbright, she gave me the class. And I taught second year cat anatomy there, and I loved it. Well, I was pregnant at the time. My first child was born in 52 when I got my master's. I was three months pregnant. And in those days, women like me, we stayed home for a few years to raise our children. I stayed home for about 15 years until Louis was 15, then Susie was 11, 12, and Michael was 7. One day, my husband looked at me and he says, you know, you're not happy. What's going on? I said, Izzy, you know what? I belong to all these volunteers when I have time. I'm a classroom mother, I do, but I feel like I could learn more, I could do more. He said, go back to school, get a doctorate, and our children will go free to college. Jewish, yes, I'm a Jewish. I'm not orthodox, I'm what you call conservative, reconstructionist. You know, I love the faith, I love the tradition, I love the family things about it, but I'm not a fanatic as some are. Follow a lot of things. It's wonderful, our family, the Passover and the High Holy Days. It's wonderful to bring family together. And my children have continued it. You have to love what you're doing, which I did. I get up at 6 in the morning, I go to 37th and Walnut and unpack the car so I could set up my three hour laboratory. And, uh, as a result, I got a bad back and a bad hip, but that's all right. I, I wanted it to be just right. I really loved it. And to keep on learning and to respect those who know more than you in different ways. I always listen to my students. I say, today you're going to tell me there are things you know that I don't. 